Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be taking a look at some creative pitch shifting techniques you can use in Cubase. So this will take you beyond just the basics, although we will be looking very briefly at the basics and a few techniques you can use to expand your sort of sonic palette as far as pitch shifting samples, etc. goes in just in the project window. So this isn't about sampling, etc. We're just going to be using some loops in this case, but any audio you can do this to and Hopefully you find some techniques which you will be able to use in your own projects. So first things first, let's take a look at actually just how you do pitch shifting in Cubase. So here I've got two samples which I've had from Media Bay. So first things first, I've got this organ. This is all part of Steinberg's sort of included content. So just got this apparently hip hop uh, organ stab loop. So. And also got some jazz style drums here. So. And they're at different tempos. We'll uh, worry about that later on. So we're just going to be working with the organ for the first part of this. And I think the techniques are fairly similar, but there's a few do's and don'ts depending on whether you're dealing with melodic instruments or percussion where you don't tend to have recognizable pitch as much. So first things first, let's take a look at how you do pitch shifting. So you will need to have the info line. So the info line is present at the top here and it may or may not be present in your setup. So if you click on a sample you've got imported, you should see all this information. If you don't see the info line, click on the cog, click on this one. Don't click on that one, click on this one. So click on setup window layout and then make sure info line is ticked. I think by default, info line and status line are ticked. I turn the status line off because it's not telling me anything I particularly need to know all the time. Once you've got that present, then you can change the pitch of your sample with the transpose and fine tune control. So say, hopefully you're aware of this. So if we just wanted to pitch this up by an octave, it's 12 semitones. There you go. You get the idea. Let's take a look at how you can do this in a creative manner. Now, often what I want to do in an arrangement is thicken things up texture wise as the arrangement goes on. Now, if you're doing this in MIDI, it's pretty easy. You can just copy or duplicate the part and then double the notes up an octave, etc. So much so that I even had a macro to do this when I was doing this kind of thing a lot in MIDI. In audio, it's not so straightforward because often you won't have a sample which is the same thing played up an octave or down an octave so you need to make it yourself now the way you would normally do that would be just to transpose it so what we'll do is we'll duplicate this track and then this one here we're going to transpose up an octave and then play the original and then put in the up an octave version now, if we turn this down, it might be okay, but the, the problem with this is if we listen to this on its own, you can hear it's got that umpa lumpa pitched up kind of vibe to it. It's, it's not so great on its own. Some things it will work okay, but generally if you go up an octave, you're going to get this munchkinization, I believe the less... Uh, Willy Wonka style term is, but certainly it sounds it sounds like it's on helium, etc. It's not something that most of the time you're going to want to use. There is a way around this. So you can change the algorithm which is used on track. So you click up here. Now we've got three sets of algorithm. We've got Elastic Pro, we've got Elastic Pro Format, and then we've got Efficient. We don't need to care about efficient because uh, I've, I've got a powerful computer and we're not doing that much. We're only doing one thing. Obviously, if you've got thousands of tracks or thousands of samples being done, you might need to use these, but generally you don't need to worry about it. Now, the standard ones here, these are sort of for compatibility with things back in the day. So you may want to play around with these, but your results generally will be worse with these. So generally you'd stick with these. Now, this favors time, this favors pitch, and this is the tape mode. So the tape mode allows you to change the time and the pitch will go with it. Now, if we change this to tape mode, you'll notice something, which is suddenly transpose doesn't make any difference. I can change it to any number I want. It doesn't make 
any difference at all. But we will see how that is useful a bit later on. But we're going to look first at the formant mode. So we can favor either time or pitch. I'm going to favor time for reasons which may become apparent. We get a different effect with this than if we did the pitch shift version. So if we just did the straight non-formant version, then it sounded Oompa Loompa. This doesn't sound Oompa Loompa. It doesn't sound necessarily perfect, but it does sound like somebody's played it up an octave. It doesn't sound as pitch shifted as the other one. There are some weird sort of artifacts in there. It sounds a bit like synthetic speech. There's something in there. It doesn't sound totally like somebody's played it up an octave, but it's definitely more usable in terms of texture. And if we play this in with that and take it out, it's subtle enough, actually. We need to put it in at a louder volume to hear it. So it's, it's not as offensive, I would say. If we try it down an octave and listen to just this one. Again, it sounds like it's played down an octave. If we change it back to the original one, we get quite a different effect. Now, generally, I think pitching down by an octave most of the time sounds more convincing than pitching up because you're not getting all that munchkin-y kind of vibe in there. But I think that the format version in this case is, is a nicer version of it. And again, yeah, so that would probably be the one I would choose of the two there. Now, if you try and replicate this, there will be one problem which you may come across. So this is that the algorithm is per audio event rather than per audio event per track. So you can see at the moment, I've changed this one here to form and pitch, but because I changed it there, this one has also changed as well. So if you make a change to this, it will be using form and pitch rather than the mode you might have thought it was. So if I change this one back to time, and then change this. You can see they're both on time. So that's something you A, need to be aware of and B, would need to change. So this one here now will be in normal time mode rather than what we were looking for, which was formant time mode. So we need to fix that. And the way you fix it is you can do bounce selection. So bounce selection basically does an audio mix down in place and will just change the event that you're talking about. So here I'm going to shift and two finger tap and then do bounce selection. And that will replace that. A couple of things happen. Firstly, this all goes back to the defaults, which is zero transpose and back in the default mode of pro time. But this has had that format minus 12 applied. So let's just call that organ format minus 12. And now we are free to change this one. And you can see they're different. So actually, I'm going to put that ironically back to time and then duplicate it. And then do a standard minus 12 on this one. And then we can compare between the two. So here's our standard minus 12. And there's the organ formant minus 12 one. So yeah, that's just something to watch out for. Uh, it caught me out and I didn't really realize what was happening the first couple of times that I uh, started playing around with multiple versions of the same thing on the same track. So yeah, using band selection allows you to effectively start with a new audio file, which has its own settings, etc. And there are plenty of other uses for bounce selection as well. Now, you may be wondering why I've been using format time when after all we're changing pitch, but this is about what it favors because of the way that the algorithm works. It can either ensure that the time stays in the right place, so the timing is correct, or it can make sure that pitch is correct at the expense of the timing. Now, if we change it to formant pitch, 
You can hear this slightly out of time, whereas in time, they're not. So there's there's just these little differences in the processing. Sometimes, particularly with the voice, you'll probably want to favour pitch rather than time, and you can always uh, maybe bounce it down and adjust that afterwards, but it's certainly something to be aware of. If you start doing this with drums, it's going to go south pretty quickly. So this next technique is probably a bit old school and it's something that I've used sometimes to add a bit of sort of grit and grime to some samples. So often you get samples which are really pristine and clean and you maybe want to just make them sound a bit glitchy. Now, certainly back in the days of sort of big beat, etc., the sound of pitch shifting and time stretching, uh, exposing the sound of the algorithms was was a big thing. So, you know, you'd get these big breakdowns, et cetera, where you could really clearly hear what was happening with the the technology and the, the algorithms weren't that good. And that's something which had a, a sound, which part of which I liked. And we can recreate this to a degree with the technique we're going to look at now, which is making use of the tape uh, algorithm. So in this case, we're going to do it by an octave, but you don't have to do that with percussion what we're going to do is we're going to halve the time that this takes. Now, if you've seen the video on rescuing recording, you know that by time stretching this, you halve or double the speed, depending on what you want, but also you alter the pitch because this works like tape does. So to go into time stretch mode, you can either click and hold here and do sizing applies time stretch, or you can repeatedly press the one key until you get the arrow with a little clock. And then we're going to, half the time and you can see that's all got squished up so there's plenty happening there and this as you can hear sometimes that is actually useful sometimes with percussion etc doubling the time and bringing that in can end up with some really interesting rhythms this isn't going to work in this particular case but what we're going to do now is we're going to bounce selection to fix that like that and then we're going to time stretch it back to the original time. So that will return it back to where it was. But now it's fixed at a slightly glitchy octave up. So this is another variation on transposing up. It doesn't sound exactly the same because you've done it in a more extreme manner. Now you can do this multiple times. So what you can do if you want to make it more glitchy, you can then go back into tape mode and then. Let's double it, bounce selection once more, and let's pop that back. So now so you can play around with this again and again you know say we can keep repeating the process if you want to do that kind of thing and you can degrade this but i often find the first time i do this it just gives a bit of that glitchiness which i like and we can hear we're back there again but it's it's something that i've used when i've got a really pristine sound or sample and i just want to give it that edge and yeah there are other ways you can do that kind of thing because obviously you can put it through distortion some but i just find i get some interesting interestingly ugly uh processing there which is reminiscent of the bad old days talking of the bad old days let's take a look very briefly at the old algorithm so back in standard land so if we look at these you'll find that all of these we're not going to go through all of them but all of them will will sound quite different so, so obviously we're not applying any shift here, but now if we go minus 12 and then, so you can hear if we use the drums one, we get some interesting effects on there. And in solo, it's interesting again a custom you can change these so you can play around with this and 
The one problem with that is you don't get real-time auditioning of what you're doing, but here you can see we've got something which has retained the rhythm, but obviously the pitch is... I'm not sure that is 12, is it? But... So playing around with that, again, if you're looking for sort of old school, lo-fi, uh, late 90s, big beat uh, manipulation, then the standard may be where you want. Now, I certainly find that these vary greatly depending on the source material. So your mileage will vary drastically depending on what you do. So it's worth playing around with if you want to make things sound a bit different. Now, you may be wondering why I've been sticking to minus 12 and 12, and the reason is that generally this is what will work musically. Now, that's not to say that there aren't other options. So you can change something to, let's say, a fifth and play it. Now, a fifth is seven semitones, so that's fun. And you get that kind of futuristic-sounding Battlestar Galactica planet where all the casinos were, parallel fifth sound, or you can do a fourth, which is five, because of course it is and minus seven which is down a fifth or minus five which is down a fourth um yeah but other options often you know apart from the chords that wouldn't have worked too badly but generally you are more limited in terms of the transpositions which are going to work now that is not the case with percussion So typically with something where you are doing percussion, so you'll find it works much more happily on many more numbers, depending on exactly what you've got in your percussion track. But we can see here, it doesn't instantly sound horrendous. Obviously that does. But it's, it's much easier to thicken things up and then you can just bring this, you know, take this out of the mix a bit more. So that's, you know, much easier to play around with because you are generally, providing you haven't got toms which are really, really pitched or other parts of the kit, generally you'll be able to get away with more and you can play around with fine tuning, etc., and just get something where you are thickening it but you're not necessarily altering the, the key as it were. As mentioned earlier on, one of the techniques which I found useful with drums is that you can use time stretching to change the rhythm and create something where you've got two in the time of one, etc. And often things which are more creative than that. But if we just change this here, so there, so I quite like this little bit of fill in here. So we've just got just that little bit leading into there. So just by doing that, probably have a bit more of that actually, just, and probably a bit less of that bit. And now make that more subtle. Maybe just yeah. So I've I've often found by doubling the speed or halving the speed, we get some. It's not necessarily polyrhythmic, but you get some different rhythms in there, which often will fit. Partly, I think, because of the feel of the sample is being preserved to a degree, and they tend to they tend to sort of subdivide nicely. You can get some interesting effects, and then obviously you would you would mix it. So I mean, now I just turned it down a bit, but I'd probably spend a bit of time EQing that. But we've got something a bit different. And then obviously you're free to pitch shift that, play around with it, do all those other things, etc. So there's a, just a few ideas and techniques and also things to be aware of when you're playing around with the uh, pitch shifting, etc. in Cubase. As ever, hope you found that video useful. And if you have, please like, subscribe, etc. All of those things which the algorithm overlord will find pleasing and suggest this content to more people who may be unaware of it. And hopefully we'll see you soon for more Music Tech Tuition.